God was moved by love so as to die for man. So God loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. All of us were helpless. We were in the world and without God. And nothing would at any point would have saved us from the fall or from the sin that we were in but the love of God. God knows every sin that we are inside and God knows that the only way out of it is not you trying to try trying to come out of it but it's for him to give you that life. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Wow, this is a beautiful day that the Lord has made and we are glad to be here so that we can fellowship the word of God. This is the Marvelous Believer Show. I'm your host, Lucy Lepore, and I'm excited that you are able to, hear, to be here and to fellowship with us. Tonight, I am accompanied by a wonderful man of God. He is a minister of the gospel. He's been here before. I'm sure some of us have listened to him here or elsewhere but he's a teacher of the word and a minister of the word. And so I want to welcome uh, Minister Bonnie Glorious. We are so glad that you're here with us. Thank you. And uh, I just wish to give you the platform so that you continue. Awesome. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. It's so beautiful to be here again uh, at the communication or at the fellowship of the word of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And this cannot be found anywhere else but the word of God. It is only in Christ we are. When we are speaking about Christ, we are revealed more to who Christ is and who we are in him. So the conversation continues and it won't be silent. And until the return of Christ Jesus, that is the time that it, in fact, it won't end even there. And then the Bible says that it is forever established in heaven. So <laughs> the word of God is the eternal excellence that will never end and it will never cease. Hallelujah. And so today, before we come to the place of the word, allow me to begin with the word of prayer in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, we are so grateful. We are so thankful. We are happy because of the love that you've shown us. Thank you because of all that you have done for us in Christ Jesus. And everything that you have given us, everything that you have done for us, we remain forever grateful, our Lord. Even as we continually and more and more continue beholding your word, Father, and the word of God and your word says that as we continue beholding, we are glorified into the same image from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are coming for a perfect church without spot or wrinkle. And this is the place of the sanctification, which is by the water, which you call the word. And today, as we get sanctified, we are so grateful because many lives will be changed. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are so good. You are so wonderful. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Holy Ghost is already moving. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, it's so good and wonderful again, Pastor Lucy. We are so grateful and we don't take this lightly. It's so wonderful to have the Word of God shared all through the nations. And wherever you are watching us from, you are blessed as we proceed with this. And yeah, we are almost and we have exited the month where we, we celebrate the love of christ or the death and the resurrection of christ jesus and it has been the love of god it has been the love of christ since day one uh, it is only in christ where god was moved by love praise the lord and there are some things that had to happen for christ to die for us it was of necessity for god to send aid from where he is so as to help or save man from the fall which was there since the beginning. Hallelujah. And in many places in the scriptures, we have seen the pre-existence of darkness and then the existence of light. And there's a place where the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, he says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says that the earth was without form, and it was void and the Holy Ghost was moving upon the face of the waters or the Spirit of God and there was darkness but then the Bible says that and God said let there be light and then there was light and God divided the light from the darkness so uh, in one way or the other heaven always represents the the inhabitable or the highest point 
of a being. I'm at the highest place because when we are here on this earth, heaven is the highest point that we can mark a high place. Praise the Lord. And earth is the place of man, the indwelling of man. And this is where now the place where God placed man and gave him dominion over. So now when man was given dominion, man was deceived from the dominion that God had given him and he poured darkness in this place. And that verse in the in the that verse the verse Genesis 1 3 he symbolizes the place where God will bring light and where God's word will bring light and the first thing that God had prepared or the first thing that God creates after the earth was dark it was the light and that light is presented by Christ Jesus when he came to this world he came to bring the light praise the Lord and there are some necessities that were there there were many ways that God would have saved man. But because God had created man in his own image and given man dominion over the face of the earth and over everything that we see in this world, so God himself also, he had to send man. He had to enter into a human body. And we have said this again and again, that Jesus became the son of God. When God, the fullness of God, entered a human body, then that is where he became the son of God. Otherwise, God, he's a triune God. And that subject maybe we'll find sometimes and discuss it so much. But the differences between, the, between God is the function. It's what he was functioning as. In the beginning, he was functioning as the father. And in the salvation of man or when he came to save man, he entered a human body and he became the son or he became Jesus Christ. And now after salvation, in the place where he is bringing man to the truth of what he has already done or in the place of executing salvation, he becomes the Holy Spirit because he cannot fit inside a man. A man cannot fit in a man. So he had to change form <laughs> and became the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, but at the end of it all, it's about the salvation of man. So God in Christ Jesus, he came to this world so as to save humanity, humanity which was lost. Uh, allow me to reflect at the story of the woman who was at the well. There is a verse in the book of John chapter 4, verse 4. And all of this, or the salvation of man from God, was moved by love. It is the love of God that moved God to save man. Man was dead. Man was in sin. There is nothing that man would have done to bring himself out of that darkness which was there. Praise the Lord. And the psalmist speaks about the death that was in a man. He speaks about the darkness. All of us were helpless. We were in the world and without God. And nothing would at any point would have saved us from the fall or from the sin that we were in but the love of god god himself being moved by love he was moved with compassion and that's why he came and he died for us and that day that he died for us he died for the whole world but not the whole world have received that salvation at, until today so now God is continuing to speak to us and he's continuing to remind us that the reason that he died for us was because of the love that he had for us. We who were dead, we did not have strength. Maybe someone is there and is asking, he's, uh, maybe this is the comment that comes from people when we are maybe in the door to door, the evangelism meetings and someone, when you, when you tell them that God loves you and is calling you to himself, they will say, okay, let me finish with my sins here or with doing this and this and this, and then I will come back and then I will receive salvation. But if God wants you to leave them all first, uh, then come to him, then he remains, he is so powerless. God can be so powerless. If God tells you, you must leave that, you must leave that. You must leave the other one for you to be saved by me. That means God is not with power. But that's not it. God is so powerful. And today he's representing his word in a, in a different angle of sight. Because the Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, the world that was dead, the world that, the world that was full of darkness, like we, can, we, we had mentioned in Genesis 1, the Bible says that, Darkness was upon the face of the deep and there is nothing anyone would have done to come from that darkness. It only needed a higher aid or a higher being who would bring something that will dominate the darkness. And it's not like, okay, for example, when you enter a dark room, 
you don't enter that dark room and then start chasing out darkness the only thing that you can do is to switch on the light and then darkness will not even have any resistance it will just leave and that is what happened at the cross when christ died for us we were in a dark place. We were in a dark entity. We were in a dark world. And still today, many people are inside the dark world. But now the difference is, some don't have an understanding that God has already done something that will bring us out of that darkness. He has already shattered on the light. And that light is the thing that brings us from darkness into this light. Praise the Lord. And that light is the word of God. He says, in him. In the book of John chapter 1. So I'm trying to, to bring them all together and summarize them. He says in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word, all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that has been made. Then he says, in him who, in that word, who was the light? He says, in him was life, and that life is the light of men. So there's a darkness that we were inside, and the only way out of that darkness was light, was a life. Like, he's trying to show that that darkness is like a death, because he's saying that in him was light, and that light, in him was life, and that life is the light of men. So the only way out of darkness, or out of the death, which was caused by our father Adam was by receiving another life. So when a person is dead, the only way out of that death is by receiving life. And so when Jesus came, he gave us life. And now in dying, that is full expression of love because again, God is so superior and he would have decided to do something else or maybe do something extra and leave man to his fall. But now God moved by compassion. God loved us so much. Like now the story in the book of John chapter 4, the Bible says in the fourth verse, I will read the Amplified. He says it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. Uh, Jesus, okay, let me read from verse 1 for context emphasis. He says, when, there, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, Though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he says he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. There was a shorter way that would have taken Jesus from Judea to Galilee. But now, the fourth verse says it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. Necessity moved Jesus to go through Samaria. And this is the love of God expressed in this parable. Or, okay, in this story. Because Jesus would have gone, would have used the short way to arrive to Galilee. But now he goes through the long way, a longer, a longer route for the sake of love because the woman was in sin. She was in darkness. But now when Jesus comes and presents to her the light, but now in form of water, and that water was, as, was symbolic to a higher life, the life of God, which came to the life of this woman. Yes, Jesus knew the weaknesses of the woman. He saw everything that was with her that represents the darkness which was there in the beginning. God saw that we were in darkness. God knows every sin that we are inside. And God knows that the only way out of it is not you trying to try, trying to come out of it, but it's for him to give you that life, so as to bring you from that darkness into that higher life, praise the Lord. And this is the aim of God. This is the aim of God. He is not waiting for us to change so as to come and love us or to come and express his love for us. But in real sense, Jesus loved us when we were in sin. In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, he says, and this is a very common verse, which we, most of us understood this verse when we were still children. Right? You can be a witness. And he says, For God so loved the world. At times you can take like, God saw a very perfect world. And then he sent his son. Do you know, if God knew that man had the ability to save himself, he would not have given us the son. Mm. If God, because God is all-knowing and he knows all things. So, God who knows all things, in his all-knowingness, he knows that you cannot come out of that sin by yourself. 
He knows that you cannot come out of that thing that is disturbing your life by yourself. So that's why God, who knows all things, has given the solution for that issue that you are going through. So he says, for God so loved the world, number one, God loved the world. God was moved by love so as to die for man. So God loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. So God loved us. He gave us his son. Then he says that whosoever. Now, he brings the place of our access. He brings us to the point where God is advising us what we are supposed to do through his word. So he's saying, when I loved the world, I did every work that was necessary for your salvation. So I loved the world. I gave my son who came and died for you. Jesus had no sin, but he died for men who had sin. This is like some form of substitution. Most of us are football fans. And you know what happens when there is something we call substitution. What happens? The person in the field is substituted with another person who is outside the field. I like it that way. The person inside the field substituted with another one outside the field. Now, the person in the world <laughs> was substituted with Jesus who was not in the world, who was not in sin. So now, the fullness of God, the full righteousness of God, Jesus who was the righteousness of God, he became sin. So that the man who was in sin might be made the righteousness of God. That is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse number 21. He speaks about whatever happened at that time. He says, For he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. So this is the story of the Christian life. Our story is that Jesus, who was outside the world, who doesn't know any sin, who is not a sinner. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 19 verse 6, when Pilate looked at Jesus, and Pilate had the power of God, there is something that was working in God. Because Jesus told him, uh, he, he spoke to Jesus and asked him, what, what is your name or what's wrong with you? But Jesus did not answer him. And then, when now Pilate tried to threaten Jesus, so for Jesus to answer him, he says to him, don't you know that I have the power to release you? And the power to kill you or to execute your killing. But Jesus speaks to him and says, no, you don't have that power. Unless it is given to you from above, you don't have that power. So he had been given the power from God because it is God who loved the world that he gave us his son. So the death of Christ was as a result of the love of God. So when God loved the world, he gave us his son who was full righteous to the world that was full of sin, who was without sin. So God who said, let there be light, this time around, he comes as the light because the world was in darkness and people were full of darkness. We used to walk in darkness. When you read the book of Psalms chapter 82, he says that they know not, Neither do they understand. He says they walk on in darkness and the foundations of the world are out of course. They were out of course because of the darkness. We did not know. We did not understand. We walked in darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Praise the Lord. Again, the face of the deep. But now in Psalms, he says, was in the earth and the foundations of the world, they are out of course because of the fall of man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the love of Christ, the love of God was compressed inside a human body. Then God took on a human body. He came to the world that was full of sin. He was substituted. Now he took our place of sin. Now the player outside the pitch comes into the pitch because of the player who was inside. And then the player who was inside is taken out of the pitch. Wow. That is so big. So Jesus... Entered the pit, which is the world, which was full of darkness, and he died for the sinful man. And then the man who was in the pit was taken from the pit and was given the righteousness of God, which was inside the pit. Praise the Lord. So Jesus entered the pit. He died for man. The death of Christ 
was not because he had done anything wrong. So Jesus was made a sinner according to 2 Corinthians 5.21 and we were made righteous according to the word of God. That's why he's saying he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in who? In Christ Jesus. So the man who is in Christ has been made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Beyond any answer, beyond any questions, the scripture has taught us that Jesus became a sinner. We have been celebrating Easter. Easter means, or it takes its, its meaning from this, that Jesus did not just die. He, he was not killed. He gave his life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then again, it was not suicide. <laughs> He had a reason for his death. So Jesus died our place of death because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So Jesus took the wages of sin and it was laid on him. So sin was laid on Jesus. He died on the cross for us. And then we who are dead, he gave us life. Praise the Lord. We who are in darkness, he brought the light for us. He revealed the light to us. He is the one who enlightens any man that comes into the world. And the only way to have access to this light is by what he continues to tell us in John chapter 3 verse 16. So God loved the world. God gave us his only begotten son. That is through substitution. That whoever believes in him, that is who believed that he was a sinner and then believed in Jesus, he was made or he was given eternal life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus was not sent into the world to condemn the world, but he came that the world might be saved through him. So Jesus died for us that we might live again. And then the concluding part of this place is, is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. He teaches us what really happened in the death of and the resurrection of Christ. He says 2 verse 1, And you has he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. So we were dead in trespasses and sins. But now Jesus has quickened us. Praise the Lord. He has made us alive. He has taken us from the place of death into the place of life. We were dead, but he has quickened us together with Christ Jesus. Let us rush to the Fifth verse, where he continues with the same subject. He says, even when we were dead in sins, has he quickened? The word quickened there means to raise together. So he has quickened us with Christ. He says, by grace you are saved. He continues to say, verse 6, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of the grace and the kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So in the ages to come, or in these ages, because of the death of Christ, now the death of Christ happened like more than 2,000 years ago, but he says in the ages to come, it still takes effect, even to us today. So today he's calling us to that life. If you have never received Jesus, Jesus, it is as easy as that you are a sinner and you are in sin. But now Jesus has come and he has died for our sins. Or rather, you have been dead because you cannot, you cannot come from the dead without the power of God. Or rather, you are in a pitch where only substitution will have saved you a great deal. So Jesus comes to the pitch. He gives us our, his place and he takes our place. He dies for us and he is resurrected. He, he is risen, sorry. He comes back to life again. And then when he came back to life again, substitution had occurred and the death that we were supposed to die, he has died that death. And now in the resurrection, we were raised together with him. And that resurrection takes effect until this day. That's why up in that place, he did not leave the place of saying that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. So he's showing the exceeding riches of his grace through the preaching of the gospel so that when you believe you are taken up from that place of death and you are resurrected hallelujah it's only in christ where we are born by believing when you believe in christ you are born again or rather you are taken from death to life you receive eternal life amen and allow me now to continue from this point i will handle it back to pastor lucy <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Wow, that's the love of God. That's the gospel. I always say, if it's not good news, yeah. it's not the gospel. That's yeah. the love of God. Yeah. That he went into our place. Yeah. He was outside. He was okay. Yeah. He was fine. He was God. Yeah. But he took our sins. He yeah. took our nature. Yeah. He came. It was not being killed. It was not murder. It was not suicide. It was him giving him. So he says, greater love has no man than this, yeah. that a man should lay his life for another. Mm -hmm. He laid his life for us. Mm -hmm. That is the love. And like uh, Bonnie Gloria started by saying, it was it, it, God did not put a condition. He did not say first do one, two, three. Yeah. And I know there are people who have been listening to us and uh, maybe there are things you've been trying to work on yeah. first. So that you can be acceptable. The Bible says he became sin. Yeah. There is nothing else you can do. The worst anyone has ever, has ever been is to be a sinner. Yeah. There is nowhere else you can go. He became that sin so that we become the righteousness of God. And so we have become the righteousness of God. We've been raised with Christ. Glory be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. So if you are there and you've been struggling to deal with one or two things before you come to Christ, just go back a, a few seconds where he has made the prayer and just say, Lord, come into my life. It is you as you are. That's how he wants you. And most of those of us who are watching us and we are born again, we know and we know that it is the love of Christ that took us from that nature of sin, from darkness. And what he has given us is life. Yeah. What he has said is we've been raised with Christ. Yeah. There is nowhere in that Bible that talks about from heaven you were dropped. You, you, you have been given permanent residency in the heavenly places. That's where you belong, the marvelous believer. That's where the love of Christ has carried you to. And that is where we remain until the rapture, until Christ comes for us. Glory be to Jesus. That was a beautiful, beautiful word. And we bless the Lord. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, please share this link with someone. Let someone hear the word. I'm sure you know someone who needs to hear this, especially if they had not yet given their lives to Jesus. We need them to hear the good news. The good news is come as you are. God has not put any condition. Yes. The way you are is the way he has come. He died already. There is nothing else that can be done. There is no deeper pit than the pit of sin. Yes. And he already became sin for you. Yes. So that we can all become the righteousness of God and enjoy the love of God. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Bonnie Glorious. We are truly blessed. And uh, thank you all of us for keeping it. Wema TV, keep watching us, sharing this link. And uh, God bless you. Let's meet next time. Amen. Amen.